Hey everyone, Ollie here. So we are back with another keyboard video. You guys seem to love keyboard videos. My MX Keys Mini video, I think did like 200,000 views, nearly 200,000 views, something crazy like that. But this time we have the new Logitech MX Mechanical Mini. So this is the mini version that I have here. And I've been really looking forward to getting my hands on this. Um, I got like express delivery so that I could get it quickly just so I can cover it in a video. So let's look at the packaging first. So this is the US international version. So even though it shows the UK ISO sort of enter key, it is the US version, I know that for sure. Um, yeah, the front of the box just shows a graphic of the keyboard itself. And on the back we have some features and functionality and stuff. Keyboard itself, quite light actually, lighter than I expected. We'll get into it in a second. Have some stuff here. Looks like we have the dongle apart, which, which to be honest, I would have preferred if there was a way to actually hide or put the dongle in the keyboard so that it's always in the keyboard ready to go. Putting it in the packaging like this, um, yeah, I'm, uh, it's, it's, I feel like it's so easy to get lost. That's the only problem. Have some more sort of like create the ultimate setup sort of card thing. And then we have the keyboard itself. It looks really nice actually. I love the sort of two-tone gray look to it. The keys look nice. The actual printing on the keys is more of a sort of light gray. It's not white. We have the Logitech Logi logo at the top here. The top case is made from aluminum, but the rest of it is made from plastic. And yeah, it feels, it feels pretty good quality actually. It doesn't feel as heavy or sort of chonky <laughs> as some other keyboards that I've covered on the channel before, especially the one in my previous video of the Keychron Q1. Um, this is much, much lighter, a much lighter keyboard. There are some razors here, risers, whatever you want to call them, to angle the keyboard a bit more. Close that. On the top here, we do have a USB-C port and an on-off switch. So if we turn that on, it lights up lights up green and then it asks us to pair a device. Do the keys come off? Oh yeah, yep yeah, they do. So the actual keycaps themselves do come off. So I guess if you did want to switch them, you could. You could put your own keycaps on this. Pretty nice. I wonder if in the future Logitech might offer different keycaps. That would be quite cool. I feel like if you can take the keycaps off this quite easily, I don't see why you why they couldn't really offer keycaps. According to Logitech's website, it weighs 612 grams. And yeah, I mean, like I said, it's quite a light keyboard. It really doesn't feel heavy. I feel like this is much more of a sort of portable keyboard. You could put it in your backpack and it's not going to feel like you're dragging around something super heavy. I feel like what Logitech are doing here is that they've seen brands like Keychron, Keychron especially. I feel like Keychron has really blown up in the last couple of years. They've seen brands like that offer mechanical keyboards for a lower price. Obviously, they're not super high quality. They're just meant to be quite user-friendly and, and anyone to basically have a mechanical keyboard. And Logitech have clearly made this to compete against them. They want to have their own mechanical keyboard because the hype for mechanical keyboards has definitely blown up over the last couple of years. It seems like everyone wants a mechanical keyboard. If you're someone who types a lot every single day, you're going to appreciate a mechanical keyboard. It is also backlit and it's pretty clever because the backlighting actually turns off when your hands aren't on the keyboard, when you're not using it. And then as you start using it, the backlighting comes back again, which is really nice because obviously that saves battery. It has a 1500 milliamp hour battery. And if you have backlighting turned on, it looks like it will last around 15 days with the backlighting on. But what's insane is that if you turn the backlighting off completely, the battery will last 10 months, which is just crazy. That's, that's pretty insane. So. Yeah, once you've connected it up to your Mac or your iPad or something, PC, and you have it at full charge, yeah, you can use it for 10 months without charging it again, completely wirelessly. That, that is really impressive. I'm really impressed by that. You're only gonna need to charge it once a year, which is just wild. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. This keyboard I have here in particular starts at $150 or £150. You can get a larger one with the number pad and that goes for $169. Um, this is actually $50 more than the standard MX Keys Mini. And yeah, I can see why, you know, it's got that sort of mechanical factor to it. You could change the keycaps and stuff. Um, I also think it looks much nicer than the MX Keys Mini. I actually have the MX Keys Mini. I also have my Apple Magic keyboard and yeah, we can sort of test it out. So the typing experience is okay. 
I don't want to say it's anything amazing. I think the one thing that bothers me most is that the keys themselves have a little bit of movement in them. And yeah, that to me is just quite annoying. Um, can be quite frustrating. When it comes to the sound of the keys, yeah, it's pretty quiet. Um, I don't think it's the loudest thing in the world. Um, I think, I think in an office environment, this will be completely fine. I think most people will be okay with it. With this keyboard being designed for Windows and Mac, it's nice to see that the keys have double printing on them, depending on the system that you're on. So yeah, most people won't have any issues. You don't have to switch the keys or anything just to see what key is for which system. So I have the MX Keys Mini here to compare against the MX Mechanical. And you can see the design is very, very different, super different. The MX Keys Mini has the sort of um, roundedness to the keys, you could say, well, the indentation. Um, the Me MX Mechanical has very much sort of standard looking keys. The keys themselves as well, as you can see, are very different too, especially the up, down, left, right keys. I much prefer the bigger up, down, left, right keys on this for sure. But then this does have the bigger shift bar. Hmm, really depends. I guess that comes down to personal preference. I feel as though the MX Keys Mini definitely has more of a sort of like a button, more sort of clickiness to it. And this has more of a sort of linear motion to it. And obviously there's a lot more key travel in this as well. So if you prefer more key travel, this is easily gonna be the option for you. Now this is of course $50 more expensive than the MX Keys Mini as well. So that's something to take into consideration. I can see why it's $50 more, because it is a mechanical keyboard. Um, you are sort of getting more of a higher end product compared to the MX Keys Mini, but it really does come down to personal preference. So here is the standard Apple Magic Keyboard for comparison. You can already tell the Magic Keyboard is much smaller. It's also much, much thinner. The Magic Keyboard is so thin in comparison to, to the MX Mechanical. Like it's just night and day difference. Um, but if you want a mechanical keyboard, you are going to have to put up with some thickness of the keyboard that comes naturally. And again, the MX Mechanical has a lot more key travel compared to the Apple Magic Keyboard. I still personally really like the Apple Magic Keyboard. It's still the keyboard that I use most, even though I have access to all these different keyboards. I still prefer the Magic Keyboard. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't exactly know why. Clearly, this should be a better keyboard. Same with the Mode 65 that I have, which I'll bring into shot in a sec. Um, yeah, this is, uh, the Magic Keyboard just seems to be the one I always go back to. Um, it's weird, I'm weird, I don't know why. <laughs> I just prefer the Magic Keyboard. And then we have the Mode 65, which is by far the most expensive keyboard out of all of them. The size, um, it's a little bit wider, as you can see, but it's not as tall, mainly because it doesn't have the function of keys. And the Mode 65 is just, yeah night and day difference. The Mode 65 is a better keyboard and it should be because it's a lot more expensive. I can't remember the exact cost of this one, but I think it's over $400. So yeah, it's, it's expensive. <laughs> it's definitely much more expensive than the MX Mechanical, but this takes a lot more work to put together. I didn't actually put this together myself. I had someone put it together for me. It's also much heavier. It's not something that I feel like is super portable and yeah, it doesn't have the functional royal keys. This is a 65% layout. The MX Mechanical is a 75% layout. So you have the functional royal keys. I think for most people, unless you need a number pad, this is the keyboard that they would be happy with. This is the keyboard definitely that I prefer, the 75% or 65, well, mainly the 75%. I do like to have the functional royal keys. I mean, like I said, I think this is definitely targeted at people who are looking for a mechanical keyboard, but they don't want to go through the hassle of sort of assembling one themselves. They want one that's ready to go and they want one that's on a budget. Obviously it's not super cheap. You can get cheaper keyboards out there, but for $150 from a brand that is trusted and known by a lot of people, yeah, I feel like a lot of people will actually be quite happy with this if they want an upgrade over their standard keyboard that they have right now. I do like the slim profile of it. I think it is pretty nice and thin. I also like how lightweight it is. It's going to be perfect for sticking in a backpack and taking with you wherever you like, especially for someone who's going between maybe uni and home or whatever. Um, I can see this being targeted at students. $150, I think it's okay. Um, you can look at other options out there. Keychron is another option out there. Um, if you want a slim, low profile mechanical keyboard from a trusted brand, like I said, I think Logitech is, is definitely one of the ones to go for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.